Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, now, I know you zealously watch all my videos, so um, uh, you will have seen the one I did recently on uh, the Vigna Verde. Uh, I had a couple of Vigna Verdes, and uh, I, I finished tasting them and I thought, hang on, I've got a load of Spanish wines here, which are made just over the border from where those Vigna Verdes are. Why don't I, I, I put them back on the table and uh, try them with those Spaniards? So here I am. So the first one I've got, well, you, if you didn't see, I'll, I, I'll taste this Vigna Verde again. It's the uh, Quinta de Azevedo Vigna Verde 2011, with, and it's the Sograp. Um, uh, this, this is one of the Sograp estates. Uh, grapes here, uh, Lurero and um, Paderna. I think it's like two-thirds... Uh, Two thirds Lorero and uh, a, th uh, a third Paderna. And um, I tasted it all of 10 minutes ago, and do you know what? It's exactly the same. It's still this lovely, briny, fresh, uh, zesty, uh, it's got this minerally bite, but with a bit of pumice stone, green apple, and uh, yeah, just lovely, uh, sprightly, seafood friendly wine. Bring me some garlicky prawns and I will hoover it up. Um, so, um, excellent, I really like it. Uh, but then we get back into uh, Spain, and um, so we're just over the border from Vigna Verde's top end of Portugal, Galicia, uh, in Spain. Um, and so we've got, I've got five wines from the Rich Baixas region, and I've got three from this producer, uh, Bodegas Terras Gauda. Uh, this is their Abadio di San Campio Albarino 2011. So Albarino on this side of the border, Alvarino, we've got one of those coming up, uh, on the Portuguese side. There's a slightly jelly-like character to the fruit here, um, uh, so it feels like, like there's a, um, a, a soft bit, like a peachy bit, and I think that's the, the soft jelly-like bit, uh, but there's also a bit more of a bite of citrus. Uh, it feels like it's going to be good uh, rather than great, um, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll, let's give it a whirl. I like it, but I don't. I don't think I quite like it enough. Um, I don't know whether it's after the precision of the uh, uh, of the Vigna Verde. Here, it just feels a little bit too soft, a little bit too peachy. It's t a touch of that jelly-like character coming through. It may be that it's on the young side and it needs another month or so to uh, uh, to really open up. But I miss, um, yeah, I miss the poise of the first one. Uh, so here, it's a nice gentle peach pear, a little bit of the citrus flitting in and out. But I want a little bit more sense of the soil. I don't really get it there. It's good, and I certainly wouldn't refuse a second glass, uh, but it's not, um, it's not great. Let's try the next one down. Uh, so here we are on Martin Codex Albarino 2011, um, and uh, so Rich Baixas. And these guys, I think they're the largest producer in, uh, in the Rich Baixas region. It's a, uh, it's a co-op, basically. I think it started in the, in the 80s, and a pretty well-known label. But uh, the wines usually, usually deliver the goods. Let's see whether this one does. Now that's, this is a this is a bit better. It's got it's got more of the herby uh, citrus tang to it. It's still got the, the, this rounded, uh, quite aromatic fruit, um, almost verging on the apricot here. May getting into that. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, Albarino tastes a bit like uh, Viognier, and here I'll get a little bit of that exotic, ever so slight nut kernel character. Um, it smells like it's going to be a bit richer, even though I think it's the same alcohol level. Um, the first one was twelve and a half percent. This one is twelve and a half percent. Uh, but yes, it feels like a, a fleshier wine, fleshier, more interesting wine. And it is, yes, it's got that, uh, it's got, yeah, it's got the precision that uh, the, uh, um, the, the Terrace Gouda one uh, lacked. Uh, and um, here you, you, you're left with, your mouth's left, it knows it's had a wine with quite a bit of flavour. Not full-bodied, but full-flavoured, light to medium-bodied, and with this herby, more, more a mineral tang. I like that. <clears throat> Let's go back over the border into Portugal, because uh, so this is one the back to the Vigna Verde. So this is a Soiero uh, Vigna Verde 2011 from the Moncal and Meliaco region. So as I say, 20 minutes since I last tasted this. Um, I, 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 I didn't really mention it on the Vigna Verde um, video, but both this and the um, uh, and the Azevedo have got a little bit of spritz to them, which will be giving them freshness. Interesting, some people say, what's the difference between Albarino on one side and Alvarino on the other? Um, I, I often find the Portuguese ones bottle their wines with a little bit of spritz. I tend to taste more of the uh, sea in them, uh, more of the, yeah, more of the marine influence. So here, um, yes, there is that... Uh, it, it, I, it, very similar in character actually to the previous wine. Herbiness, um, this mixture of uh, the quite exotic, some of the peachiness, but with a, a fresher citrus and green apple. But here it has got a briny bite and maybe, uh, well I don't know, they've, they've both got a, a nice mineral tang to them. Um, I'm not sure which I'm going to prefer. 
I would very happily do some repeat tastings of which of those I prefer there, but they're both pretty good and um, nothing conclusive I don't think will be proved, but I would have a very good, nice time in the process. Let's just move on, try the next one. So we've got, uh, uh, next one is back to Terrace Gouda, and uh, this is their, um, I think it's their top Alborino, it's called O Rosal, uh, I don't know whether that's a vineyard or just the name of a, a cuvee, but um, it's uh, yeah, uh, Mayores Uvas, uh, so the best grapes. And uh, two, again, 2011, and again, just 12.5% alcohol. These are nice, light summer wines. And it's fascinating, uh, this, uh, it's hard to believe that this and uh, the, the, the first, what was, it, what was it called, the Cam, Abadia di San Campio, uh, from the same producer. Here, uh, there is more, much more of that, oh, well, I suppose I, I call it an almost Portuguese mineral uh, bite. There is a little bit of the fizziness in there, uh, not as much as, the, uh, as was in the previous wine, uh, but um, there's also this, um, yeah, I get this touch of grapefruit, um, and uh, yeah, the, it, it's, it really is more majoring on that citrus and the minerally spine. Describing it as flat lilt is probably a bit pejorative, but um, it is, it's got this pineapple bit, it's got this grapefruit bit, and it's got apple, peach, um, it's the, the other bits of citrus in there, and holding it all together, uh, sprightly acidity, um, tangy minerality, um, very tasty, um, favourite so far, uh, although the previous two weren't bad at all. Those five were all 2011 vintage. Uh, we've got a couple of 2010s now. So the first 2010 is um, Filaboa, uh, Alberino, and uh, let's give this a whirl. I should probably have tasted this earlier this year. I, I was sent this for uh, a National Paella Day, which is sometime at the end of March, and we're at the end of May now, so apologies to the people who send it. Um, I don't know whether they've now moved on to a different vintage, but um, this is 2010, um, and uh, Alberino is often touted as something that you need to drink at its youngest and freshest. Uh, do you know what? I've had some old bottles uh, of Alvarino and Albarino, and uh, it lasts surprisingly well. Um, and uh, what I find is that, yes, maybe it uses loses some of that uh, youthful, um, youthful sprite and spritz, but um, gets a bit more wiser and more interesting in the process. Here, um, some, maybe some of the citrus uh, intensity has calmed down slightly, but it, it, it's allowing a more uh, earthy mineral, uh, more, of the, more of the riper apple edges to come through. It smells like it's going to be good. And then when I come to taste it, I'm not so sure. I get, I get this feeling of um, an ever so slight bitter character coming through. Um, uh, one of the ways in which you can get aroma out of grapes is by leaving the juice in contact with the skins for a short amount of time. Normally, with white wine, you just whip the juice off the skins as quickly as possible. Uh, but uh, leaving it on the skins extracts a little bit of uh, flavour and aroma, but it also extracts a little bit of um, tannin. And I don't know whether there's just that little bit bitter tannin there. Um, and it all, it's 13%, okay, it's not much different from the, the ones before but I notice a, a, fatter, a fatter style. Uh, so I find it good, but uh, the previous three have been, uh, have been better. Still wouldn't say no to a glass or two though. Um, final one, uh, we've been on Alberino uh, for the previous um, five wines, uh, but now uh, we're back uh, with some strange grapes here. Uh, we are in Spain, uh, but we are, um, the first one has some Lourero in. This one's got Lourero in. It's also got some, it has got some Albarino in. But the main grape here is one called Caño Branco, um, a, a Vino Verde grape, which, yeah, you don't really see it a, a anywhere else. Uh, but here, I think it's like, it's more than 80% of the wine. So um, let's see what it like. It's probably going to be the best Caño Blanco I, uh, you, you ever see on these videos, mainly because it's probably the only Caño Blanco you're going to see on these videos. Let, but let's see whether it's a good Caño Blanco. Well, it smells rounded, quite fat, oily. Um, it feels, uh, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's got the sprightliness of the, of the Alborinos. Here it feels more rounded and ever so slightly stolid. Uh, so you get these peachy edges, but it's not fresh peaches. It's peaches in, uh, it's cling peaches. I don't know why they call cling peaches. Do they drop, drop, if you drop them on your skin, do they cling to you like a, lim a leech? Um, but um, yeah, it's just that oily, uh, ever so slightly uh, fruit cocktail-y character. But I may be wrong, let's taste it. Touch of vanilla, um, I, th I, I don't think it's an oaked wine, so I think that, that's uh, to do with a bit of the wine making, but also a bit of the grape. Reminds me of um, 
um, quite fat, un no, not fat, uh, of unoaked uh, New World Chardonnays uh, from uh, from coolish places. It doesn't feel like there's, um, um, I, don't, I don't have a problem there with size or over ripeness. But uh, for me, it, might me it misses out on some of the tang and the mineral character uh, that has been going on in the previous wines. Um, so it's good, and I think in other company it would have shone, but uh, there are some terrific wines here. Um, and um, so uh, when I'm looking forward to uh, drinking wine, white wine this summer, these are some of the, I think it's going to be some of my first ports of call. They're, 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 the three of these were excellent, and most of the rest of them were excellent really good. So um, enjoy your Albarino, enjoy your Vina Verde, enjoy your Riesbachers, enjoy life! Hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon.